to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Thank you, Scott Fletcher. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly webcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And as usual, not with us tonight is Robert. We miss Robert. <laughs> uh, well, I'm beginning to forget what Robert looks like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think he uh, he's got a lot on his plate with work and also with uh, buying this new house he's buying. So he told me, uh, he told, actually told us he'll be AWOL for a little while until the house gets all settled. But I think that's uh, coming up next week, maybe. So, so hopefully the next – tune in, same bad time, same bad channel. Yeah. And maybe next episode, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the show on the road here. What have you been doing this week guitar-wise, Jesse? Uh, two things. One, kind of uh, remembering how to flat p- or uh, finger pick uh, acoustic guitar. Got back on an acoustic guitar. Oh. Um, it's interesting how uh, your fingers go really soft <laughs> if you don't play acoustic guitar or bass for a while. Um, oh, well. <laughs> it's it's constant evolution. Uh, so that was nice, you know, just um, doing some... Something just, uh, I don't know, intrinsically cool about sitting on a sofa and playing an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Um, the other thing was um, some kind of just chord theory kind of reminding myself. Actually, not reminding myself. I didn't learn the caged system when I was learning. But it's kind of a neat way of thinking about stuff. I don't know if you've um, looked at the caged system on yep. various YouTube things. Um, yeah. I know Justin Guitar has a couple. And there's various other ones who do it, too. And it's a pretty good way of thinking about chords and chord positions and arpeggios and, you know, the fretboard and where the notes are. So, yeah, I need to actually get back to that cage stuff because uh, one, from what I'm working on right now. But two, we actually with my instructor, uh, we we went through the cage system for a while. And what I remember are some obscene stretches, <laughs> uh, especially with the G shape uh, minor chord and even just the G shape uh, uh, chord in general. Uh, so I definitely need to get back to that because right now what I'm working on are arpeggios. Now, mm-hmm. I've been working on mostly dominant sevenths, but I've uh, E shape and uh, A shape. But I've also been doing um, minor sevenths and major sevenths as well. Right. And trying to incorporate those into my soloing and my improvisation. Right. So right now what I'm doing is, you know, flip one backing track, break out the loop pedal and whatever, put a put a uh, progression down and then try to do nothing but the notes in the arpeggio. Right. And it sounds like crap right now because I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but eventually it will get better because I mean I, right now I sound like how I sounded when I started with pentatonic scale. Right. right. You know, and that's normal. Anytime you pick up a new thing – and, you know, as my instructor said, I'll probably never break into a full solo with nothing but the arpeggios, right? <laughs> right? But it's one of those things that, you know, you can use to add flavor maybe over, you know, you're doing some pentatonic stuff and then over a four chord, all of a sudden you pop out a couple of those notes that are not in the pentatonic scale but are in that, you know, four chord arpeggio, uh, dominant seventh arpeggio. So it'll actually maybe at some point sound like I know how to play guitar. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you already sound that way, my friend. So that's true, actually. And uh, although I'll say, I'll say that uh, some people made a career out of playing solos of nothing but arpeggios. And what I'm thinking is those 80s uh, sweep uh, heavy metal neoclassical guys. Oh, sure. Yeah, so sure. Went nothing but high speed arpeggios. Now, of course, we're talking three octave. <laughs> right. But, uh, but yeah, they made a, made a big, I don't know. Some yeah. money off of that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's all gone now, up the nose or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, 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 all joking aside. I, it's, it's, not, it's not a sound that I want to play. There's nothing wrong with it, right. but it's not what I want to do, right? Yeah, I, I, I want to be a blues, blues rock player, and I don't think you see a whole lot of that going on no. in blues, blues rock. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, that's what I've been working on. I've also been working on some turnarounds um, so that I can pretty much end a solo or, you know, if we're jamming together, I can pretty much tell you when I'm done, it's your turn to take over, uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And I've got one or two mostly down. 
so uh, yeah, I pretty much I've been working on just a smattering of stuff. Even got back into Sweet Child of Mine. I want Excellent. to uh, yeah, I want to polish that off. I think I'm in a place now in my skill that I can polish that song off. You know, okay. not the whole thing all the way up to the second solo done. That's kind of where I want to be, um, and sort of like that. And of course, we'll come back to talking about songs a little later uh, in this episode. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go ahead and move on to our next uh, segment. This is becoming sort of rooted into our show here, at least until we run out of history. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. What would that be like? (laughs) Oh, could that that happen? So uh, this Fortnite in guitar history, and uh, I thought something we should talk about is B.B. King's 89th birthday, which just recently happened. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he is uh, definitely someone who has heavily influenced my guitar playing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I haven't, I only realized that somewhat recently, Mm -hmm. you know, as I was listening to some of his recordings and thinking, geez, you know, that's kind of the sounds I try to make. And I I think what it is, is it's that tone. Mm -hmm. He's not like a a speed freak, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure he probably can play that way when he wants to. Um, but he's got such a great tone and that's sort of what I try for is that nice sound to, to playing. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I so I really respect BB King and I, and I would love to one day have someone, um, have be listening to the radio, have BB King playing and somebody walk in on me saying, Oh, I thought that was you playing. Awesome. That would never happen. That. It's the next time I'll go to your house. <laughs> nah, it's forced. It doesn't count. It's forced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. i was i was wondering do you have a favorite bb king song uh you know i've never listened to bb king a whole lot so i i i listen to what's you know on youtube sure <laughs> but i don't sure. really uh, you know i don't even I don't, i'm ashamed to say this i don't think i have a bb king cd I have, uh, you know, like kind of blues collections and everything. And as much as I right. like to play the blues, I mean, like when we get together, mostly what we play is, is blues stuff. It's because it's the only thing I know how to play. Well, but <laughs> and it's so it's so enjoyable. I mean, if you want to just get together yeah. and have like an enjoyable kickback jam, I mean, that's an awesome way to do it. Um, and yet, having said that, I'm not well steeped in the blues kind of sort of history, except for like newer, you know, like um, – uh, Stevie Ray and, and Jeff Healy, those kind of, you know, the newer guys. Right. Um, but yeah, so, oh, shameful. But I, what was funny, uh, I, I tend to, the one thing that I, I don't know if I got it from BB King, but one of the things that I'm, I'm similar is, is vibrato. I mean, I saw him play and kind oh. of hey, sometimes a vibrato. I mean, I tend to overplay, which is the opposite of what BB King does. <laughs> right. right. You know? But it's like, uh, but it, when I actually slow down, I actually hit a, a that shimmery vibrato is like, oh, wow. Yeah, he's the king of that, isn't he? I mean, think of like the thrill is gone. Yeah. That first that first note where he sits on that B vibrato, right? Yeah. And it's just – it's amazing. And it's clear. It's it's textbook. This is how you're supposed to play a vibrato. Yeah. yeah. You know? And as, by saying that I, that, that I that I, I don't mean to say that I have it anywhere near <laughs> BB oh. King's ability. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> it's not very smooth. I'm just saying that's sort of where – I yeah. go maybe because that's what I like to hear. That yeah. Sound. No, no, absolutely. I mean, it's a great sound. I mean, I, on the other hand, I've listened to a lot of BB King and uh, I think one of my current favorites is maybe one that's not too well known. Uh, it's not originally one of his, but on his album, uh, One Kind Favor, I think the first song on that album is called um, Please See That My Grave Is Kept Clean. And it's a blind, I think it's Blind Lemon Jefferson song, if okay. I remember. Yeah. And uh, it's just a really cool song. Um, and it's been remade by a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. B.B. King's version is really cool. And I know that when he came out with that album a few years back, uh, he had said in an interview that his family was a little bit um, apprehensive, I guess, about him playing that song because of his age. Right. You it's know, it's like, too wow. close to the heart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and honestly, I think that at his age, that's the the kind of thing I, I don't want to be morbid about it, but I think that is a good time to play a song like that you know it's it's one of those things where it really uh i think it has more of an emotional impact on the listener it's true you know i and one of the i think in the last decade that songs that like touched me like in a way it's like 
whoa, man, I really felt something was Johnny Cash's uh, Hurt. Yeah. You know, because it, and I think it's because it was so close, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so, yeah, so I have to, I have to hear that version. In fact, your assignment, should you choose to accept it, is uh, make me a, a mixtape. It has to be on cassette. Of, awesome. Uh, <laughs> have no way of recording a cassette. <laughs> okay, fine then. You can uh, put a list together <laughs> that would hypothetically fit on a cassette uh, yeah. of the best BB King uh, as a, according to Chris. I will take that up. Now, I, oh boy, that's a, that's a large responsibility because I feel like, you know, I have to have some kind of knowledge about that. But uh, yeah, so it'll just be a whole, a whole CD of nothing but the thrill is gone. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> So, all right. Well, uh, listeners, uh, if you would like to share with us your favorite BB King um, songs, uh, please tweet us at SST Show or uh, hop over to our YouTube um, channel and just search us, uh, Six Strings and Things, on YouTube and place a comment at the, underneath this episode and say, hey, guys, this is my favorite song. And maybe we can get a little discussion going on about BB King and his great songs. So, tonight, I thought what we would talk about is the songs we choose to play. Mm-hmm. All right. So as a guitarist, you have lots of options as to what to play. And so why is it that you choose the songs that you choose to either to learn or maybe they're aspirational songs for you? Um, what motivates you to learn a particular song? So I thought I'd let you get started, Jesse, not to put you on the spot. Or, no, that's fine. Well, th- the thing is, there's different reasons, and they come up, at, I guess, depending on your mental state. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of the things that uh, – some of the reasons that I chose various songs were um, I just liked the song. And particularly when I was just starting out, I had no idea – like how difficult or easy a particular song was. Like oh, yeah. early on, <laughs> this boy, this brings back memories, right? So some of the earlier uh, songs that I learned would be like Rhinestone Cowboy from Glenn Campbell and Country Roads by John Denver. I started out in the whole folk tradition, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, and most of it's like, I love this song. You know, teach me to play it. And my guitar teacher at the time, uh, luckily, they're basic open chord songs. You know, when we got on just like some ABBA song that was all bar chords, eh, it was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> was it Dancing Queen? It was, in <laughs> fact, Dancing Queen. <laughs> was it really? <laughs> it's the only ABBA song I know. I, you know, <laughs> ABBA's just not my thing. So it's a cool <laughs> song, actually. But anyway, so yeah, well, he ended up um, transposing it to an open key and basically said, okay, you can't do this, you know, along with the record. Right. But uh, yeah, so that was one thing, just whatever you, you'd like, because you know, you're highly motivated. This is a song you want to do, and, and it's in your ability level. Um, of course, now you can kind of scope that out quickly um, with tabs and you know, chord charts and everything online very easily. Right. Um, and just go, no, not that one. <laughs> Move on <laughs> to the next, you know, whatever <laughs> song. Um, so the other thing would, it would be uh, something instructional. Instructional, yes. So particularly if you have a teacher – um, or even online lessons that are trying to illustrate a certain point where um, whether it be the song or a riff or a solo where it's like this is a good illustration of this kind of thing. Your Sweet Child of Mine is a great example of those sort of um, s- skipping string, you know, um, finger pattern. Um, so that's a great song for that. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to admit uh, a girl got me to learn that song. <laughs> Was it your wife? <laughs> yeah, yes, as a matter of fact, it was. <laughs> At least that's what I'm going to admit to publicly on the YouTube. Now, um, yeah, so uh, that happened because she was at a concert with her mom, a country concert, and I don't even know who it was because I don't follow country music. So, and um, base, apparently the artist played that song on stage, and mm-hmm. she's like, she texts me, so and so is playing "Sweet Child of Mine." You ought to learn how to play that song. Well, it turns out. <laughs> That as normally while she's gone, one of the things that I do is play guitar a lot. And so I was just happened to be practicing guitar when I received that text. And I, and I so I played it because I own the song. And I was like, gee, I don't know if I can do that because this was a uh, two years ago, I mm-hmm. guess. Maybe I was maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've only been playing for about maybe a year and a half, maybe. Mm-hmm. And so um, I went over to YouTube, found the, you know, how do you play Sweet Child of Mine video, whatever mm-hmm. the top one was, and just started very slowly working through that 
in, intro, right? Mm -hmm. Just very slowly working through that intro. And, you know, eventually it got under my fingers. And uh, and I, I so basically I, I played it because my wife likes the song. I like the song, too. And I really wanted to, you know, have something that she would like to listen to while I play. Because at that point it was uh, Paranoid and um, uh, let's see, what's the Judas Priest song? Breaking the Law. <laughs> Yeah, you know the uh, half of uh, Iron Man, <laughs> same half. I still know at this point. Uh, <laughs> I haven't gotten very far with that one, and, you know. But a couple other, very few songs, right? And mm -hmm. so I thought this would be something she has to stomach listening to me play um, while she's home, and so might as well play something I think she'll like to hear. So that's what got me to to learn that one. Finding out that wow, it's a lot of technique to that song, and uh, you know, to get it to sound right, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And apparently, from what I had heard, um, Slash had that intro as a exercise mm -hmm. and this exercise became one of the most recognizable rock riffs you know of all time right uh but yeah so other reasons you know certainly in, instructional um you know things you want to learn because there's a good maybe there's a good run in that song or i want to sound like that particular i want to be able to incorporate that riff in my playing or that kind of thing i have found that when i i should say many times i thought i wanted to learn how to play a song Mm -hmm. And when I get part of the way through it, I kind of realize, no, actually, I didn't want to learn that after all. Yeah. Because you kind of just get sick of it or it's not what you think it is. Because when you listen to a song casually, mm -hmm. right, um, you're, it's some, a lot of times it's in the background. Right. Maybe you're singing along while you're driving, but you're not critically thinking, listening to the song. Mm -hmm. When you sit down to learn how to play a song, it, the whole thing changes. You start to hear things you haven't heard before. You he and, and you're going to hear it over and over and over again. And so it's a real good test of whether or not you like that song. Yeah. One of my favorite songs of all time is Paranoid by Black Sabbath. And I was a little bit hesitant to learn how to play that song because mm -hmm. I was afraid I'd get sick of it. Yeah. And I didn't want to get sick of it. Um, that turned out not to happen. I just one of my <laughs> when I come home from a bad day of work, I like playing Paranoid. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, That's a good a, one. It's a good one to play. <clears throat> That's true. There was a song like uh, R.E.M.'s, uh, The One I Love, back in the oh, day. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was just kind of stacking on, building the repertory of, of strummy acoustic songs at that point. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that was one that I figured out, I'll pick this up because it only sounds like it's a couple chords, and it was only a couple chords. And then I got really rapidly tired of it because it's only a couple chords. <laughs> and not just <laughs> that, but I mean, there's really no not much to the song itself, so... I, Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Some of the songs that you think you really love and you're like, wow, that sounds so cool. When you start to learn how to play them, it's like, mm -hmm. that's it? Yeah. It's G, C, and D yeah. <laughs> or, or whatever, you know? And uh, that, I have to say, ever since I've, and I've told you this before, ever since I started learning how to play guitar, I listen to music completely differently. Oh, yeah. It's, and, and, and many of the songs that I have listened to growing up or whatever, I'm, I'm, many of them I'm hearing again for the first time. Oh, it's true. And yeah. it's, and and you you hear it in like layers. It's yes. kind of funny because you'll listen to the guitar riffs or whatever, and you hear the guitar chords. Sometimes then you'll start listening to well, okay, how many guitars are there? How do they build this chord? Because sometimes, especially in like it, the stuff that I liked in the eighties, were like really stacked up, like Def Leppard. Mm -hmm. They were more a studio. Not that they weren't a good live band too, or aren't, I guess. <laughs> but. <laughs> um, but they were really in the studio. You know, their producer is about building these uh, tapestries of sound, you know. And um, so any guitar chord, like really there's like three inversions of the same chord to just build this sound. And so you also can listen to that sort of production value of, of the guitars and the bass line and everything else. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and I'm even starting to notice myself hearing other instruments in ways that I wouldn't have heard them before. Oh, sure. So – there's this um, – and I don't play any of these other instruments. And, I, and um, there's a song by Within Temptation um, called Sinead. And it's a little more poppy than I would normally listen to. But mm -hmm. I actually – I like the song a lot. Great band. And, yeah, great band. And um, and I noticed uh, when, I, when I got the CD, I listened to the song a few times. And I started to notice like every time she'd say the name Sinead, mm -hmm. the, you'd hear the crash. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I'm like, oh. And, and, and if I were to have listened to that song, say, five years ago before I started playing guitar, I would have never noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. There's just no way. your ear to listen. Yeah. There's an interest. You know, it, listen in headphones a lot it is, well, like that's a big thing today. Everybody listens in headphones today. But yeah. back in the day, it wasn't, you know, as big a deal. Um, but I would listen really intently. And there were some bands like Queensryche was one of my favorite bands. 
And uh, their production was weird in that they would put subtle effects on different like lines of the song, of the lead vocal. And it's funny because you'll hear an effect and then that effect will go away and another effect will come in. And they're subtle, but it's always changing to kind of, I don't know, change the mood like constantly. Yeah, yeah even simple little effects left and right. Switching yeah. the left and right channels, you know, uh, there's a few Metallica. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a Metallica song that uh, I had listened to with headphones on. And I was like, whoa, that's completely different than through my stereo speakers. Absolutely. But, you know, the key if you're listening to headphones is to have headphones, not earbuds. Yeah, big time. Get some good yeah. headphones. Yeah, get some good. They're definitely worthwhile getting if you if you want to enjoy music. And uh, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm old enough that my ears are bad enough that MP3s are okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep the bit rate high and you should be all right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess we kind of diverged from our topic of why we choose certain songs to play a little wow, bit. That's okay. Surprise. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> we got off topic. <laughs> that's how that's how this show works, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's actually been songs that I've I've didn't choose to learn how to play, but my instructor suggested them that he thought they'd be good for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Funk 49 was one that he recommended and I never got through the whole thing, but there were some really interesting hammer ons with chords, mm-hmm. which I had never seen before. And it was a great little thing to learn of, you know, how do you do the chord with the hammer on? And it just has this great sound um, to it. And, and there's been a few others that he's recommended that, you know, weren't ones that I would have come up with on my own. Uh, well, Breaking the Law. Mm-hmm. That was one that was, you know, suggested by my instructor. And it's like, yeah, well, that's a good beginner song. So why not? Sure. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of good reasons to. Uh, to choose a song, whether you want to learn a part, whether you want to learn the whole thing, whether or not you end up hating the song after they get done, <laughs> get done learning it. Impress a girl and then she yep. goes after the football player anyway. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally if made that up. Never happened to me. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, you know, kids, if you're learning to play the guitar to get the girl, don't play guitar to get the girl. Yeah, that's true. There's always the football player around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> But in the end, you win anyway because you get the guitar. <laughs> That's true. That's right. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. But I won't say anything else that will get myself in trouble. <laughs> so as I do know, my wife does listen to this show. So uh, yeah. anyway, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add to uh, uh, the songs tonight, Jesse? Um, I don't think so. We will – again, we will touch on these things repeatedly. So I'm sure things will come yeah. up. In our minds. Yeah, and we just want to get the conversation started. So, you know, listeners, please uh, tweet us at SST Show. Leave comments on the uh, YouTube channel. Visit our site, JesterCat.com. And let us know what songs are you working on right now and why did you start to play them? So, I guess we will conclude for this evening. So, until next time, boys and girls, just remember, keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of JesterCat Studios. You can see more about this and all other JesterCat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 